Here's the plan. We get the warhead and we hold the world ransom for one million dollars. One million dollars. What's up, Cinemaniacs? We are back, and we are back with Cinebrief number three. Number three. And as always, Cinebri. The Bri Man. <laughs> Sir Bry Man. <laughs> I've been knighted. Yes. Just now. I have I have my sword downstairs. We could do it. Uh, I have my sword downstairs too. <laughs> Boy, though, it didn't take long for the train to get off the tracks. Did it? Uh, this is what happens when you and I are alone on a Saturday morning. Yes, yes, it <laughs> Left does. Left to our own devices. <laughs> Um, so we are going to do here today is we're going to talk about several different topics, and those topics are. <laughs> <laughs> yes, those, um, those, topics. <laughs> those topics. Those are the topics. Um, those topics are what they are, and uh, the first, <laughs> the first topic that we are going to be talking about is some new news that came out just a few days ago, and that the Transformers movie. Not only are they planning number five, but they are planning number six, and they are planning number seven, and on and on and on. Not really on and on, but they are planning three new movies, which is. Astounding, considering how much crap was given to us in the last one. So, anyway, the this is this is what we are getting. Paramount has set release dates for three more Transformers movies: 2017, 2018, 2019. The studio announced Friday that Transformers 5 would open on June 23rd, which is the same date already selected by Warner Brothers for Wonder Woman. So that's a head-to-head -head battle. Transformers mm -hmm. 6 has been slotted for June 8th. 2018, which sets it up against Godzilla 2. Mm. Set it up against the Godzilla 2 from Warner Brothers and Legendary. Transformers 7 has been scheduled for June 28th, 2019, which it's the only title to land on that spot so far. Okay. So, what are your overall just thoughts on the Transformers franchise and the dates that they've selected? Uh, well... I like the franchise. I know that the last movie was n not putting their best foot forward. Um, the biggest deterrent in the, the three before that was Shia LaBeouf, who does his very best to ruin everything he's in. He's just a... <laughs> he's, a he's just a... Just do it! He's just a movie killer um, and a franchise killer. Uh, hey, those but, movies that he was in, he was very good in one and three, I thought. One, he was great. He's completely responsible for nobody liking the last Indiana Jones movie. I don't care what anybody says about the whole Crystal Skull thing or anything yeah. like that. It was all his fault. He's kind of a curse. No, he. Uh, but the uh, listen. The pro the thing with the the Transformer movies is mm -hmm. at this point quality can be thrown out the window. They're going to keep making them because yeah. they keep making money. I'm not sure how much combined the first four have made, but I'm I'm guessing it's a healthy number in the billions. Yeah, it's probably close to four billion. Probably. Yeah. So, see, that's the other thing, too. There's such worldwide appeal with Transformers. So, it, it's not like one of those things that's just an American thing. Mm -hmm. That is a... that is a it did, The last one did... I mean, it did well. Did it well in, in China? It China? Did, well, it just did well in the United States. Not great, but it did well. Yeah. Um, it didn't do as well as... It, the, the box office totals in the United States have kind of been going down. Yes. Um, uh, and rightfully so. Uh, oh, I think overseas is where it made a bulk of its money. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, as you know as well as I do, if a franchise if, – if a studio knows a franchise can keep cranking out mm -hmm. films and they make money, they're going to keep doing it regardless right. – I hate to say regardless of quality, but regardless of quality, they're going to do it. Yeah. Um, you know, the question is um, – <clears throat> Where are they gonna Where are they gonna go with these? Um, we've seen a lot. There are actually there are still quite a few different um, avenues for them to explore in terms of storylines. Uh, at some point, are we gonna see Unicron? I want to see Unicron. I don't know because visually, I'm just trying to imagine that yeah. in an action film. To answer the second part of the question, as far as the timing, 
Um, the only thing I can say about that is they must be filming all these basically back to back if they're going to yeah. be releasing them a year apart. I, I would imagine that has to be. Um, although first, uh, m- my first reaction is I kind of like that strategy though because I it, it's just going to keep it fresh. It's going to keep it you know especially like the 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 key one will be five next year when that comes out. If that's good, it will really set up anticipation nicely for the following. I think that this is very kind of just ballsy on their part because the the last movie was very very poorly received not only critically but you know even the audience didn't really love it i didn't love it um but i think it's just ballsy because if this next one shows that especially if they're filming them like back to back to back like they are gonna have to film these quick um so they might already be in production for the sixth installment by the time this first one releases, um, they should be in, in production already. Um, so because of that, is the problem going to be the, the fifth installment doesn't do well? They're already in production for the sixth. What's going to happen? Because they can obviously, you know, get rid of the, the one, the, the, the eighth installment. They can just, or the uh, seventh installment. Right. Um, they could just say, forget it. You know, we're not going to do that movie because... You know the second, the the sixth one didn't do well. I mean, the fifth one didn't do well, and the sixth one, you know, unless they get a new director and all that kind of stuff, yep. who knows? But I think the biggest thing that I get, I get a little worried here, and we're going to be talking about Batman vs Superman a little later, um, and the the uh, WB franchise, the the comic book universe that they have going, yep. is they selected the same date as Wonder Woman, um, which is pretty ballsy. I mean. I, I'm I'm nervous because they are just they are just throwing their weight around against Warner Brothers, which Warner Brothers has already been kind enough to move out of the way for Captain America: Civil War when they were Captain America was basically slated to be on the same date. They were they moved their movie back on yeah. the same exact date as Batman vs Superman. Batman vs Superman moved up like five or six weeks. Yep. Um, so. Is, is Wonder Woman going to have to shift? Um, and then we can talk about this a little bit more later, but, you know, that's... It kind of shows a little bit of a sign that stuff might get a little bounced around on the WB side. But yeah. we're going to talk about more about that later with an article that was uh, done through HitFix. And um, not an article, but a video, video. Uh, interview. Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll get into that a little bit more later. All right, the uh, next little uh, topic up here is Hannibal Burris joins the cast of Baywatch, the reboot. Um, now, I don't know what he's going to be, but it says, com- on Variety, con- comedian Hannibal Burris is in negotiations to join the cast of Paramount's Baywatch reboot starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson and Zac Efron. I, I immediately so, showed this to the Chad, and I was like, Chad's got to be all in. Hannibal Burris is one of his favorite comedians. He loves Zac Efron. I, he likes The Rock. You know, like, and then plus, I mean, Alexander Daddario and all the talent that they, all the talent that they have, um, yeah. and the, uh, or, you know, because I, I mean, they're gonna have obviously skimpy bikinis and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts about them going with Hannibal Burris? Well, aesthetically, I'm trying to figure out how he fits in. <laughs> I know. I don't get it. I don't understand. I don't think he's going to be a lifeguard. Is he the narrator? Maybe, I, maybe, he could be a lifeguard. I mean, he'd be a funny lifeguard. Yes, he would be a funny lifeguard. Like a lazy lifeguard, you know? Like yes. It'd be kind of funny to kind of – you'd see him be like, yeah, yeah, go get that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I can see him like asleep on the chair uh, yeah. with like the whistle hanging out of his mouth. <laughs> A little bit of drool, maybe. Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, that's interesting news um, because Baywatch is just going to be a cast of pretty, yes, and, very uh, pretty people. And now there's Hannibal Burr. <laughs> so <laughs> he's not an attractive man. No, and I'm sure he would admit to that. <laughs> but um, that should be, uh, yeah, that should be interesting. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm intrigued by it. I, I think it's good because they, they are obviously not going to stay in the same tone as the uh, uh, original show. I mean, that show was on for a decade or so, um, and it had cast members upon cast members. Some of them did better than others when they left, but I think it's going to be pretty darn funny uh, uh, because Zac yeah. Efron has proven that he's good comedically. Uh, obviously, Dwayne The Rock Johnson is just amazing at everything. Yes. Um, and then you have... The chemistry that he had with Alexandria Daddario, um, the, the 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 woman that 
um, who was cast, I can't even remember her name, but she's some sort of like swimsuit model. Um, she was casted and they had a little comedic routine with her and The Rock a couple of times. And that was, I could see, you know, that playing out okay. And then on top of that, now you get Hannibal Burris and uh, There's good potential there for some... Um for some great like slow motion running scenes with Hannibal Burris. Like first they'll have the rock and then they'll have Zach Efron and they'll get all jacked and ripped and toned. <laughs> and then Hannibal Burris almost like coming coming around from the side like He'd be on the he'd be on the four wheeler. <laughs> yeah, he's on the four wheeler. And then you got like the rock and Zach Efron like looking at him <laughs> as he's like driving in between them. I, this movie, you know, the more we talk about it, the uh, the more I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's either that or, like I said, he's gonna be the, he's gonna be the narrator. <laughs> yeah, that, oh, that would be kind of funny. All right, we're gonna move on to the he's next. Funny guy though, so regardless, it'll be good. Yeah, it should be good. Um, next topic up: Emily Blunt. Yeah, <laughs> Emily Blunt is going to be joining the cast of My Little Pony animated movie. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Insert Baymax. Oh no! <laughs> Emily Blunt will voice a new character in the animated My Little Pony movie. Blunt joins uh, Kristen Chenoweth, uh, who is also lending her voice to a new character, with the main, main, as in hair main, six characters voiced by Tara Strong, Kathy Weseluk, uh, Andrea Libman, Tabitha St. Germain, and Ashley Ball. The Hasbro and Lions Game film will hit theaters nationwide November 3rd, 2017. What do you think? What do you think about your girl, uh, Emily Blunt? I don't think we're going to see any uh, sexy push-ups in this one. Oh, man. <laughs> um, good for her, I guess, for taking this challenging role on. Um, I guess, regardless, I'm going to see it. I'm sure my daughters will want to see My Little Pony. So one way or another, I'm going to hear her voice. So you're, you're not a brony? <laughs> That is a weird subculture. It is. Even stranger than the, the one that we get to see personally when we go to see movie screeners. Yeah. yeah. I, I, um, for the, what I posted, I, when I posted the article on the Cinebros page, was for all, you, uh, for all you lovers of My Little Pony, whether you happen to be a normal boy or girl or a 50 year old brony, <laughs> you just got some serious talent added to your movie. <laughs> It's definitely talent. Uh, that's, she is very talented, and she's, she's. I have to tell you, because you, as you know, I'm in. I'm in love with with two people, my wife and Emily Blunt. And um, <laughs> I, I have to tell you, there was a recent episode of Lip Sync Battle with mm. Anne Hathaway and Emily Blunt. She did Janis Joplin, didn't she? And, uh, yes. Yeah. And uh, I fell even. Yeah. Anne Hathaway took it away though with uh, Wrecking Ball. At the yeah. End. Um, but I have to tell you that it, 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 I, I somehow managed to fall even more in love with Emily Blunt. Who is just, Closing the gap? She's <laughs> so hot. Ugh, she's just so sexy in so many ways. First of all, she's physically attractive. The accent is just out of this world. Accents are always difficult. They, I mean, just because it's like just always ta- – for Americans, it always takes the the it, the hotness meter up a notch. Oh, yeah. yeah. It dials it up a notch. I mean like – if Especially Thor, British accents. If Thor, Chris, you know, Chris Hemsworth, if he sounded like a California kind of surfer, yeah, he would be still he, sexy, but not as sexy. But he'd be like dime a dozen, yeah, underwear model, yeah. But that but accent, of that, that New Zealand accent or whatever it is, yeah. is Australian, Australian, New Zealand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, it takes it. It takes him up. It's next level shit, and yeah. it's the same thing with her. Yeah, and um, she's just like. She's got such unbelievable moves. You have to watch that episode. I mean, that woman can do things with her body. That... <laughs> Good thing my wife doesn't actually watch these. Not that she care. I think that's like a hall pass that I get to have in the be, extraordinarily be, unlikely event that it does ever happen. <laughs> it'd be nice to see her walk in the background and just smack you on the back of the head. <laughs> right. Or like a piece of fruit come out of nowhere and... Sp- <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, dear. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, as far as voice casting goes, I mean, she's obviously very talented. Hey, um, there's going to be a she, British pony in there. That's all we know. Well, I mean, unless she does an English accent, like a, like an actual American accent, not uh, English accent. What would be the accent. point, then? I don't understand. No, you know, that wouldn't. But she, I mean, 
it'll be good for the movie because it's a name yes, that they don't really have and you know it's good for her to keep branching out and doing voice acting and all that kind of stuff to keep her you know because she's she's i think she's having another baby yeah. um so that'll be something that she can work on yep. while she's pregnant i mean yep. Sure. You know, so that'll be that'll be good, yep. um, but yeah, she she is staying busy, and I I I don't personally see any need for a My Little Pony movie, but mm-hmm. obviously there is a demo um, yeah, out there. Sure. Whether it's it's gonna be so awkward if there's like a bunch of forty to sixty year old men or thirty thirty to sixty year old men by themselves in the movie theater watching My Little Pony. That's where. I mean, you know how like when you and I go to the movies and I joke about people who I think could possibly be ISIS people. I yeah. think you could be – you should be just as scared of these people. <laughs> Maybe even more so. Have you seen any of like the, the documentaries or anything that they've done with those? No. Oh, my lord. They can be pretty scary. Yeah. Pretty scary. Yeah. I mean, um, so. All right. We will, uh, we will move on to the next little yes. topic. The trailer that dropped very recently – it's a little thing called Batman v Superman, yep. Dawn of Justice. The final yes. trailer has dropped. It has. In a very... <sighs> I swear. Fashion. When I was watching this, so first of all, I wasn't able to do a reaction video. I haven't, because I needed to watch it right away. I'm upstairs on my dining room table. My daughter is in the, you know, living room doing some sort of crazy dance to Caillou. And I'm sitting there and she keeps con- calling me back and forth. And I'm like, pausing, looking over, let me back, pausing. Finally, I was just like, you know what? I got to start this from the beginning. She's fixated on the Caillou. All right, let's go. Watch the whole thing. There was a part in this, in this little trailer Yep. Where I, I swear, I had, I posted on, on the Facebook page, I was like, I had to look like a thick drunk monkey. I was flailing, I was like, oh my god! Like, I was freaking out about what I was seeing. And then when I was, during Deadpool, the screen, which you need to go see Deadpool again. Yes. Because Deadpool, there is a second uh, after credit scene. Yeah, I, I heard that. And it's pretty epic. Is it? Yeah. Huh. It's not... You know, it's something that I could share with you afterwards if you wanted to, um, because it's not uh, something that you need to necessarily see. It's more of what he says. Okay. Um, And it's pretty, pretty cool news. So anyway, um, back to uh, this. So there was a point in the trailer where I was freaking out so much. The final trailer came out and that's the trailer they put in front of Deadpool. Yeah, I I was really, really amped about it. I thought this last trailer got me so fired up it uh, it jumped the level and now i'm most excited to see that movie out of yeah. all the movies this year and it's amazing how with all the trailers that have been coming out how my level of anticipation has been going up down up down up down up down and now like cause just a few minutes ago like if you asked me before i saw that trailer i was like apocalypse i want to see apocalypse i want to see suicide squad because yep. of, the, of the trailers that came out yep. but then this one came out and i was like this is the greatest trailer i have ever seen period it's the greatest trailer has ever hit my eyes ever wow yes Big statement. It, it's that was it was that damn good so what do you think <laughs> about, <laughs> about really the sure trailer? follow that up <laughs> uh it seems to me though that, uh, that with the super bowl trailers and you know even with this one the 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 cliche of saving the best for last yep. seems to be very valid. Um, this this trailer, if if it doesn't get you excited for Batman versus Superman, then you probably just shouldn't see it. Uh, yeah, it was really that good, and I loved the focus on Batman um, because that's clearly what it was about. Yeah, they haven't told they, they DC has yet to tell that story of this. Batman. So they right. need to focus more. The movie's probably going to focus a little bit more on Batman yep. because we have a Man of Steel movie already. We yeah. know who Man of Steel is. We know, we know who Henry Cavill is. We have an idea. We know. we know who Lois Lane is. We have an idea of all that stuff. We need we Batman. Exactly. We need Alfred, his relationship with Batman. We need we need a little bit more. We need a little yep. bit from Lex Luthor. So it's not going to be entirely focused on that. I think it's going to be more Batman. Like if you had a if it was going to be Batman, Superman, what I thought the timing, it'll be probably something like 60 to 40%. Like 60% Batman, 40% Superman, but ultimately they're going to share the screen for most yeah. of the time. Um, 
I, and I have to tell you, I have a feeling, and this is obviously extremely premature until we see this movie, and also subsequent Batman movies with Affleck, I have a feeling Affleck is going to move into my number two slot. As number two? Overall best bet. No one's ever going to pass Keaton. I don't care if he wins an Oscar for any of these performances. Nobody will ever pass Michael. In, in the DC lore... Superman for me is always going to be Christopher Reeve. Uh-huh. It doesn't matter. I don't care who I don't care who plays Superman in different movies over the course of the next fifty years or until whenever I'm dead. Christopher uh-huh. Reeve is Superman. Michael Keaton is Batman. That's it. It's it's just the way it's going to be, and that's no. Fa- but listen, by the looks of it, when they when they announced Affleck, and I think I told you this, I was like, he's perfect. First of all, he looks yeah. like Bruce Wayne. That is the profile of Bruce Wayne. Uh-huh. If anybody ever was Bruce Wayne without even trying, it's Ben Affleck. Right. And so really how difficult is it for you to put on a uh, tight suit and just grunt and beat the shit out of people? Really not. I mean – I will me, say those scenes showed – look at that suit and how fast he moved. Yeah, which which they – yeah, um, which they brought up in that in that video, yeah. that hit mix video. But uh, the other thing too though was the, was the fighting style reminded me of Bale though. Uh, like a, I'm watching the fighting style and I'm I'm seeing some similarities, especially like to like a certain way they punch and stuff like I, I saw some similarities. But uh, yes, the the speed was great and I loved the humor of him saying like I'm slowing down in my older yeah, age. Yeah. Like wow, yeah. holy can God. you imagine? Like they said that in the video too. Yeah. Like, like you imagine him like that? 10, 15 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Um. But I, you know, it's um. But it looks to me like. And the thing that I'm really going to, I think, enjoy about this character is that he's going to his as he's getting older and angrier and more bitter. He's using that to fuel himself yeah. in to make up for maybe the step that he's lost in older age, mm-hmm. you know, and that's like that's why, you know, and if you even kind of like compare it to sports a little like that's why I love I love to watch older athletes as opposed to younger guys because for younger guys it comes easier Uh for older guys they have to combine you know it's it's from the neck up just as much as it is physically you have to use the experience factor and that that's already going to be pre-built into this this batman character because we already know he's an older batman right and to me that's the most intriguing part but to finish the original thought i would be shocked if Two, three movies down the road with Affleck as Batman that he's not easily my number two. I, he almost he almost is based on the trailer because he looks like such a perfect Bruce Wayne. Yeah. Um, and you can tell, too. He is going to be surly. He's going to have attitude. He's going to be short with people. We've already seen it in, like, the last trailer, that first interaction with him and Clark Kent. Right. You know? I mean, you can see he's just kind of a sarcastic a-hole. Yeah. You know. He does it really well. I mean, he I... Does it really well. I think that you're getting... I am totally on board. When I first heard Ben Affleck's news, like, about him being Batman, I immediately flipped the freak out in a negative way. I was yeah, like... I was the opposite. Yes. And I, I was probably more in tune with most people. Like, they were just like, Ben yeah, Affleck, yeah. he's a terrible actor. And that I went on a total rant. But, as soon as I said that, I went back... I watched Daredevil again. I went back. I started watching some of his more recent movies. I watched The Town. I watched um, uh, Argo, and which I don't think he was the best actor in any of those movies. But I saw a lot of improvement from when he was back in the day, you know, in in all those the Jersey Girl movie and Armageddon and all that kind of stuff. He was not very good, but he has grown. It's ever ever since he stepped behind the lens, became a director, he has gotten exponentially better as an actor. Yeah. Then, on top of that, then I saw him in Gone Girl, and I was like, ooh. He's gotten really good as an actor. Act. <laughs> so now I'm at the point where then I kind of took a step back and said, you know what? My initial reaction was wrong. I think he's a good actor. And plus, because I always thought, you know, he has the size. He has the build. He's like 6'4". I mean, the guy's huge. He obviously is jacked now, too. And he's got that square jaw. He's got the yep. little dimple in his chin. Like, he is yep. just fits the role to yep. a T like we've never gotten before. Yes. So I'm very excited to see all that. I'm very happy about that. This yeah. trailer sold me about how much of a badass Batman is. Between that fighting, that fight scene at the very beginning yep. was amazing. That's what I want to see from Batman, which we have never, ever 
ever seen out of any yeah. Batman. We've seen Bale fight, but it was more shaky, more close up, and yeah. much more, I don't know, I want to say more realistic. Um, whereas this, obviously, Batman is extremely strong. Yes. And if not, maybe even has a little help from his suit to kind of add a little extra oomph into his yeah, punches maybe. and stuff like that. Because yep. he is so fluid, which we've never gotten. Bale was always extremely clunky in his bat suits. Um, which Keaton, they even alluded to in the movie. Right. Keaton. <laughs> Multiple Keaton, times. Right. Keaton was. It, and then the worst one was in the third the third movie. He was horrible. Like he was like. Uh, yeah. yeah. Like trying to hit. It was, it was terrible. But. And even Keaton. Keaton was like the worst. Like if you wanted to look right, you had to go. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was tough. Yes, like, it was. It was but very. I agree with you. Keaton is my number one overall. Batman and um, Bruce, Bruce Wayne. Wayne. Yeah. But Bale was. Bale's kind of like interchangeable with me as far as the Batman goes. Um, I didn't like. I hate Batman. And the only reason why I hate Batman's voice when Bale talks. Yeah, because it was just too muffled. Over the top. And you can't. You couldn't understand it. So it sucked. Yeah, um, I mean, you know it's bad, like when they make like when it's made fun of. Yeah, you know, I mean yeah. that's the. Have you ever? I mean, honestly, how many people have you ever talked to that disliked Keaton as Batman? Not many. I, I can't think of any off the top of my head. I mean, I, it's not a conversation that I've really gotten. I mean, uh, people usually younger people are kind of more like Bale's definitely my Batman, whereas you know a little bit more our age is definitely like oh it's, it's Michael Keaton. Keaton. It's Keaton. Um, nobody says about my dad. It's Adam West, but you know. Val, Val Kilmer. <laughs> George Clooney, <laughs> George Clooney, oh. the Clunes. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I don't really think that we we have gotten the perfect combination of both because, and that's what I'm hoping for. And when I saw the interaction between Ben Affleck and um, Jeremy Irons with you know Bruce and uh, Alfred. I thought that that interaction was phenomenal. Yeah. Obviously, there is a lot of smarts going on in that room between Alfred and Batman because yeah. of just what that opening scene was. They're coming in on the jet, flipping him up, going into the room. I'm going to throw you on the second floor. That was so incredible. I just want to see a smart Batman. I don't want to see this dumbass in a suit biting, pe beating people up, which is what right. we got with Bale. Now, he wasn't a dumbass, but he just wasn't... The genius level intellect that no, and it you're right, it was that's a good point too about Jeremy Irons in this one. It looks like there's a real balance with the two of them. Like even with the Bale Kane, um, Michael Kane relationship, yep. you always felt like Michael Kane could get his piece in, he could say his piece, but ultimately Christian Bale is going to do whatever the hell he wanted. Right. This just based on this, they seem more even keel. I won't even mention the relationship between Michael Keaton and whoever the hell it was. I forgot that played that Alfred. That was just a joke. That was a butler. Yeah. Okay. That was just literally a butler. Yeah. And, and a guy who like occasionally like you know maybe mopped the Bat Cave or something. <laughs> but but Sewed the up some wounds. Relationship between the Jeremy Irons, their relationship seems much more of like a partnership. Yeah. You know that Alfred and Bruce is seems more of a partnership than, and and that's based on some very quick. You know, I think uh, we're gonna see. Fun. I think we're gonna see some snarky attitude between. Oh yeah, you know, Alfred to Bruce, and Bruce is gonna kind of be like, you know, like yep. you saw that clip, you yep. know, like, you know, kind of like yeah. he looks at him after he says, "Well, you know, as much as you tried, you're, yeah. you know, you haven't killed yourself yet." Right. Kind of deal. like trying, kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. yeah. So it, like, I'll tell you, it does it, that. It it got me. It got me more excited for the movie. But we're gonna touch on something I think shortly that could maybe bring both of us down. But yeah. we'll see. So I um and the scene that I was flailing about like in yeah exactly when Wacky the inflatable arm guy. Yes, exactly. Yes, yes. That's what I looked like. <laughs> so if the one the scene that I did was Superman, boom, Batman, yeah. and the thing that I loved the most about it was the the way that they shot it. Yeah, Superman gets his his arm blocked, and it yep. just like not even like moving it out of the way, like using the fluid motion or whatever. Yep. it just boom stops on a stops. dot. Right. They focus in on Batman, who's just standing there staring at him like this. Yep. Then they pan over to Superman, and Superman's just like he's got this look on his face, like I'm gonna kick your <laughs> boom. Right. And then he's like he changes his look from that to like, what the hell just happened? <laughs> like, and it was. What? I love the look of it, yeah. and I was freaking out when I saw that. I was like, yes! the, scene, the scene itself is cool, too, with the rain falling down, and so you got, like, Superman's, you know, yeah. curls hanging down his face, and yeah. 
just it looked really it just looks like a great fight scene oh i can't um, wait to see that you know I, the one thing i keep asking myself is is that superman or is that bizarro i don't know no. i mean I'm, I'm assuming it's superman but it's gotta be yeah yeah i would think so i think bizarro might be a villain maybe in the future maybe yeah i don't know if they'll get introduced to me but that would be interesting yeah. That could be interesting. And who knows? That kind of that's been floated around the 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 interwebs for a while about you know are some of these scenes Bizarro and not actually Superman? Mm-hmm. But I, I think it's I'm pretty sure it's I'm pretty sure it's Superman. All right, so we uh, we're gonna move on. To, we're gonna segue into the next little topic. We'll talk about it just for a couple seconds because then I want to get into some Deadpool talk. We had a little thing that popped up. There's a possibility that Batman versus Superman, Justice League, WB, and Zack Snyder are all in trouble after a few screenings that have been done. Um, Drew McWeeny came on. Uh, and who's talking with Roth Cornett on uh, about Batman vs Superman? Um, he obviously is very sure of his statement with some of the stuff that he said in the in the little interview that was done. Yeah, but basically what he said was some sc- people have been starting to get this sh- the movie screened, yep. and the reaction isn't as positive as they'd hoped. As yeah, so now. My big question with this whole thing is, and I'll just start talking about it now. My big question about this whole this whole little subject is, who are these screenings being showed to? They are obviously they're most likely not fans. Fan, this is way too early for fans to see the movie. This is probably studio execs, <clears throat> people of that nature, with they, which they've already Maybe media. They've already done. No, the media won't. The, they are not going to show this, this movie to media yet. That, that's like. Yeah, that's true. They wouldn't do that, that. because they, you know, yeah, they that would just that. be way too. If it's early. bad, they don't want it. It's just way too early. So, the you know, you have studio execs and execs and people of that and that nature kind of probably seeing them, but they've already shown it to studio executives before, months yeah. before, like well, at least a couple months before, yeah. and there was a lot like over like overwhelming support for how awesome the movie was. Yeah. Now, what Drew McWeeny says is that. Um, we had Lex Luthor, you know, with uh, Eisenberg is yep. phenomenal, yep. and Which Ben I, Affleck is sorry, great, and and Ben Affleck does a good job. Um, but there wasn't any other talk about the rest of the movie and how good they were, um, or how good the movie was. And he says that a lot of things are going to get bumped. Like Wonder Woman will probably stay in its same part. Um, and we have, you know, the Justice League movie is probably going to get moved. They're going to probably move a Batman movie up and all that kind of stuff because, and then Zack Snyder is going to be done, not going to direct any more of these movies. And that's yep. what Drew McWeeny says. I kind of call bullshit on that a little bit because I don't think that that's that accurate. I do think the only validity was with the Transformers information that I, that I saw. And it said the Transformers movie dropped on Wonder Woman. And I'm like, right. one of those movies is going to have to move. Yes, you can't have those two blockbusters going against each other. Right. The demographic will be split too much, and there'll just be too much money lost. Yep. So, did you know Paramount or whoever contact Warner Brothers and be like, "We heard that you might need some more time on your Wonder Woman movie because of the poor receiving of uh, of your Batman vs Superman. Why don't you do a little bit more work to it, do some reshoots, and we'll pick that date and you should sh- shove your movie back three to six months." Yeah. Um, so that makes me a little worried if that's going on behind the scenes. Yeah. Um, overall, I don't really think it's that true. I think that if studio execs have a different brain, a different mindset going in, I think that that's why you get movies like uh, Fantastic Four and things like that where there was a big blow up between the director and the studio like with who had control of the editing room and the, yeah. the edit that the director wanted to put in there was totally thrown out and the studio just made a different a totally different movie with a yeah. different tone so like that's kind of like one of the problems that i have with all of this because I can't see that the studio is now going to get involved and do some stuff yeah with this because i don't know based on that last trailer i am blown away and i cannot like i can't wait Till April twenty second or whenever this uh, movie comes out, April twenty second. I don't know. It comes out in like a month or so. Yeah, here's where I'm skeptical about March this. March twenty seventh. I think. Yeah, yeah. Here's where I'm skeptical about this this hit fix video. It wasn't so much what he said; it was what he didn't say. Like, what was he leaving out? Like, it, right. it felt to me like there was almost a, somewhat of a bizarre passive aggressive manner to what he was trying to convey. Yeah. So. He told us what was working, 
which was Affleck as Batman, Eisenberg as Lex Luthor. So we've seen Cavill as Superman, and he does a good job as that. Uh, Henry, right. We already know what Henry Cavill brings to the table, so I, I can't really assume he's saying that somehow Henry Cavill has regressed yeah. as Superman, or even that maybe this is going to be more insight to him as Clark Kent, so may, maybe there's a feeling that he didn't hit Clark Kent out of the park. Right. I mean, is it is Wonder Woman even in the movie enough for that to for 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 us to really kind I of think, form an opinion on her? I would say the same about Aquaman. Yeah. Is it the well, whole is it the I, whole Doomsday thing? I'm questioning. I'm not questioning like the validity of what he's saying. I'm just kind of questioning what is it that you're leaving out. Like it sounds to me like you want to tell us something, but you're not going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> what is it that you want us to know? Yeah. And there was one thing that they mentioned too in the video, like unless this movie makes a billion dollars, heads are going to roll. Well. Yeah. Okay, so for starters, the movie probably will make a billion dollars. It's going to make a billion dollars, yeah. Globally. Yeah. So no heads are going to roll no. from it. Um, the only way this movie doesn't make a billion dollars is if the initial reviews are akin to what the Fantastic Four reviews were. Right. And even I then, it'll, even, see that happening. Even then, it'll still make seven hundred and fifty million. Right. It's still gonna, this movie's still going to make money. Yeah. You know, my first reaction to it was – but yeah. now as I'm talking it through and thinking about it, I'm just yeah. like – How much validity does this actually oh, have? I mean, what, you know, I, I, plus I don't know the agenda of these two people because it sounded like – they're making it sound like this thing's going to be such a disaster and it's going to cause such a, a seismic shift yep. in how the, ne- the following movies are going to be approached and rolled out and it's like – I'm not buying any of this. Yeah. I'm really not. I'm, I'm kind of just not buying it. Like I'm not going to overreact – to a six-minute clip of this guy and this woman talking about how maybe a few people have seen it and it's like, oh, uh-oh. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just not. Now, the only thing I will say is, and we've talked about this before on previous shows, we, I think all of us collectively have had a little bit of concern about this movie and a lot of that focused on the doomsday. Movie. That, yeah, that there, was – that. all of it was. I mean really. All of it. Yeah. it. That's about the only seed of doubt that really has been planted from the beginning. Yeah. It, to, be, to be honest, it, that that whole thing would have just been addition by subtraction if they had just left it – to your – like I loved your point of just yeah. have – do the scream. Do the roar yeah. of doomsday. But don't show them. Yeah. They Let people's minds wander and f- yeah, right. Again, th- that whole thing where we <laughs> – when we're allowed to – Leave you people know, wanting more. Right. When we're allowed to overthink and overexamine things, it just gets really bad. Case in point, all of the follow-up after Star Wars and the picking apart of that movie. I cannot tell you how many articles I've read. 40 things that were wrong with Star Wars The Force Awakens. I mean, it's like, but did you like the movie? Yeah. I mean, if you overthink anything, you can you can dissect anything to yeah. the point where you don't like it. Like, I, well, I mean, I... I say this a lot, like with, with my, I, I, there's certain movies that are on my 10 out of 10. I probably have less than 10 movies that I've rated a 10 out of, uh, uh, out of 10. Sounds like a new lifetime. segment. <laughs> out of my lifetime. Oh, yeah. And um, a couple of those movies are like Braveheart, um, Inception. Sure. Um, when I watched the movie Inception, I was with my brother. We didn't talk to each other throughout the whole movie, which is rare. I mean, I usually lean over and be like, oh, did you, that was awesome or yeah. something like that. We were so transfixed Captivated. on the movie that we just did, like, and then when the movie was over, I just like turned and I was like, holy crap, like that was amazing. Yeah. And so like movies like that, just that you watch, but could I pick it apart if I really wanted to? Sure. Yes, there are parts if I go in frame by frame, I could pick apart. Yep. But the first initial response to my me watching the movie was so overwhelming and how brilliant and that it was done that I just, I look at those movies and I'm kind of like, that that is in a first view, 10 out of 10. For instance, my favorite comic book movie of all time, The Dark Knight. Christian Bale, The Joker, Heath Ledger's Joker, amazing. Mm -hmm. That is only a nine and a half out of 10. Okay. I have never rated a comic book movie a 10 out of 10 because I do feel that there's parts in there that are a little slow. Um, and I don't particularly love the scoring of the movie, but I do find it a brilliant movie. I I think that I I am really looking forward to this this new rendition. I like the way that it's been taken. I've always thought that Superman has been kind of a dull character, especially in the the movie world, because he's so kind of like when he's Superman, you don't really see the joy and the fun on his face that he's freaking flying and that he is 
saving people left and right. Um, and then you you don't see in when, when you know Christopher Reeves, uh, Christopher Reeve played him as uh, Clark Kent, so goofy and over the top. It was just kind of like, yeah. eh, you know, yeah. a little little too much. It was so, too much. And then Henry Cavill, he's very so serious as Superman. Yeah. And now he's kind of a serious Clark Kent. I'm waiting to see how that plays out because I'm, that's what I've always loved about Batman and Bruce Wayne as dual personalities is because yes. one's so freaking serious and like just you know terrifying and yeah. the other one's so f- like flamboyant and like outgoing playboy mm-hmm, snarky yeah. you know all that kind of stuff he's just very such a good counterbalance it's a good dichotomy and it's yeah. it's very good to disguise an yeah. identity yep. um whereas like you know superman glasses yep like same person same hairstyle pretty yep. much you know yep. same person that nobody can figure it out um so that's just one of those things that i've always had an issue with superman but i love superman i think he's great so i think that man of steel is one of my favorite comic book movies of all time um superman returns i think is grace you know is a, a very underrated um that movie I think it, takes a lot of crap it so, does it takes a lot of crap and if you actually replace it like and ins- insert it into the Christopher Reeve franchise yeah. it works amazing it is yes. very very well done very well done the only thing that would have been better is if it had just been done not long after it had actually been Christopher Reeve right and it, it would have been tough because you but know it would have been campy though yeah. and, and, and but that see but, but even but, that has campy moments in it yes it does but that was part of the nostalgia too of the Christopher Reeve movie so like my favorite comic book movie of all time period I think you've, I've told you this before is Superman, Superman 2 yeah. yes and um, but I still would never give that movie a 10 out of 10 right I'd probably go 9 um, because like you said there are so many things that you could easily pick apart and not not in overthinking it just in watching it you know but there was a campiness to those movies yeah. as well um now we've we've gotten to the point where we've really tried to develop our superhero characters to the point where they could be more realistic and less and less uh-huh. campy yeah um which may be overthinking it but also it's just a different era and we approach movies differently we try to do it much more seriously so yeah but um yeah i'm i'm really looking forward to it i don't think that there's much there's not a ton of validity yet to those sentiments that they provided over at HitFix. I do think that the sources that are providing it are pretty credible. Like HitFix is a very credible site, very credible um, yeah. source. And Drew McWheeney, uh, I would say he hits more than he doesn't as far as his uh, his scoops and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but just the overall, my feelings towards it. And that just might be because I'm so so excited to go see it, especially with this yep. last trailer dropping. Yep. That I I just don't I don't buy it yet. Here's the real question, um, because the tone of what he was saying was very ominous. If you kind of I mean, you didn't even really have to read between the lines, it was right. pretty much it was pretty much there. Yep. Is it just going to be sort of maybe like will it will we look back on it the way I think a lot of people look back not myself but the way a lot of people look back on Man of Steel? High expectations didn't hit the mark. Or is this going to hit into Fantastic Four territory? No, nah, no. I don't think so. To me, it's going to be somewhere in between. Or maybe it will it, – maybe it will if – it, if it does, if it, if it falls below what many – if it hits where a lot of people uh, feel like Man of Steel did, like a little bit below expectations, I'll be fine with that because to me, Man of Steel – did not go below exp- – I loved Man of Steel. I and loved the more it, I watch I, it. I've loved it more since. Yeah. So – if it if it ends up like that, in the popular opinion, that'll work for me. Yeah. All right. We'll move on real quick. We're going to just glaze over Deadpool, um, and then we're going to wrap this show up. And Deadpool looks like it's going to break the $100 million mark. Yep. Um, and the one thing that I want to just throw out there, just give your like quick brief thoughts on, is do you think with the popularity that Deadpool is having, one of the things that I've, I've heard just through all the things that I've listened and read is... Deadpool rated R, right? Yep. Are we looking that we might get more R-rated comic book movies now because of the success of Deadpool? Or do you think this is kind of like a one and done with... Not necessarily a one and done because they've already announced the sequel. Do you think that there will, we will get more R-rated comic book movies? And do you ever think that X-Men could possibly cross over into that R-rated world? No, and the reason why is because that would be forcing the issue. That to me, that would be making it more vulgar just for the sake of making it more vulgar. They did this with Deadpool because that's who he is. The well, they could cross Val over. Is who he is. But if they it's cross all, over, what's that? If they cross over, oh, um, 
Yes, but it depends on how much. I mean, if it's a split, if it's like a real X Men Deadpool split, then the question is, will he bring them down to his level? Right. And and then yes, okay. In that case, yes. In the crossover world, absolutely. But if you're just talking about like other comic book movies trying to hit the R rating just for the sake of it, absolutely not. That kills their audience. <laughs> it could, but I mean, a hundred million dollars. You're hurting your demo. I understand. You're it, to me though. Like, if you started to do that with X-Men movies, you'd be hurting your demographic. Well, there now, is a di- I believe there's a different demographic for Deadpool than there is for an X-Men movie or for a Superman-Batman movie. Well, I will say... You, here, could- okay, here's my point. No, wait, wait, here's my point. <laughs> would, you, would you bring Cam to Batman versus Superman? Maybe. But there's Pop- no chance Pop- you're bringing him to Deadpool. No, None. no chance. No. Zero. No. The fact that you would even say maybe about Batman and Superman just goes to show you that there's no reason to start dragging comic book movies into a more vulgar area just just because one of my favorite one of my favorite quotes from i can't remember who said it online i think it might have been a twitter or something like that um was the guy he was like just sitting down for our you know thursday night showing of deadpool and somebody brings their four-year-old in to watch the movie you're in for a rude awakening little boy yeah <laughs> I mean, really? What's your thought process there, parent? Uh, no, I, there's <laughs> great it, job. Yeah, you're you better get it out of the park, man. You better walk out in a matter you of do, you do you, Dad. You might want to walk out of there in about five seconds. <laughs> uh, 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 that as soon as you read the opening credit scenes, because hopefully the kid can't read yet, and you read, you see those credit opening credit scenes, and. You need to walk out because when yeah, it says, you know, the, mm. so like uh, again, so like you know, Deadpool obviously lends itself to that sort of rating. The Watchmen obviously rent, lends itself to that. You know, you, you Wolverine. You, uh, mm, no, uh, no, I don't. I, uh, if I you mean, base I it off the comic, oh, well, okay. But if you want to be more like, because I've always said, I, I've said this on several occasions, like. Deadpool is the truest adaptation of a comic book movie being from a comic to the movie. Probably. Truest adaptation we've ever gotten. Yep. Wolverine is a tame Wolverine in the X-Men yeah, universe on I, the big screen. He is not like that. He is more of a loose cannon and more of vulgar. raging and yeah. you know doing all that kind of things. The one thing that I think that we might get, that we are more likely to get now, is not necessarily an X-Men crossover but an X-Force movie. And that needs yep. to be rated R. Like, I think that the Suicide Squad movie will be really, really good, but it could have been even better if, if it, was it was R rated because yep. of the the people that are involved. Now um, that, to me, that should, that should they should have crossed that line with that movie because those characters, first of all, you're talking about villains being, being you know, pulled out of the, you know, mm-hmm. out of their shackles to, to um, you know, try and be heroes. Not it's really even be heroes, just get the job done. However, get the you need job to. done. And the fact that they're just as expendable as can be, and yeah. the fact that they shouldn't give a <laughs> anyone or anything that they do or kill along the way to achieving whatever objective it is they're trying yeah. to get to. That movie should that movie should have gone more the Deadpool route. Right. Plus you probably would have had a better dialogue too. Screenplay probably would have been more fluid. More fluid, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, that's our thoughts on that. Uh, and we will be getting ready to sign off now because this show is reaching the 50-ish minute mark. Um, we will uh, get ready to take off. And uh, I'm going to sign off by telling you, you can follow me over at The Cinebros on Twitter, facebook.com slash The Cinebros, moviepilot.com slash The Cinebros, and obviously on YouTube, which you can subscribe to in the right, lower right-hand corner uh, on this video right here. Just hit the little icon that you see down there. It'll take you to our page. Hit subscribe, and we will love you. Um, and uh, we, do have, we do have more subscribers, which I usually like to give some shout-outs to. Oh, we got two new subscribers. Just now? Yes. <laughs> we can talk about it real quick. Just give your... First, I like I, what I like to do is something that you're not supposed to do, but judge a book, book by its cover. Okay. So we're going to read the name of yes. the guys. Try and keep it positive. Sometimes it goes a little negative. Well, we'll see. We're try, okay. Try, try and keep it positive. Okay. So first guy up, which happened a day ago, Shifter Dude 647. What does shift? What is? Who is Shifter Dude 647? Uh, I'm guessing he's a guy who likes to drive stick. And what's the 647? Hopefully not how much he weighs. 
shifter dude definitely sounds like yeah he likes to he likes to drive he's 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 into nascar he likes he, to he likes to ride that stick yeah. all right we're gonna move on to the next guy there. the next guy um and that is somebody that who joined two days ago two new yes. followers since the last show well, hold on wait thank you shifter dude for joining yes us. absolutely thank you well i usually thank him at the end but you know whatever you can think if you really like shifter dude you can thank him right now um <laughs> I just did. <laughs> <laughs> Leo, with the next guy up, very basic name, Leo Mendez. I, I like his first name. I'm yeah. a Leo, so yeah. I'm down. Yeah, so Leo Mendez. I, I just like the way it sounds together. If, if Flo, Leo Mendez, I, he, he could be kind of a heartthrob. He could be who the are next Antonio Mendez. Yeah, who are you? I am Leo Mendez. I am Leo Mendez. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, 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 that's the guy you want to keep your woman from, right there. Who are you? I'm Leo Mendez. Here's my rose. It's a scary Hola. dude. Hola. Yo soy Leo Mendez. <laughs> it really all depends on how he puts the emphasis on Mendez. It's like, is it Mendez or Mendez? <laughs> it's like, Mendez. Mendez. <laughs> I'm Leo. Leo Mendez. 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 <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Mendez. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, Leo. Thank you very much, Shifter Dude. We really appreciate your uh, support and subscription to our our channel. We are going to be doing. We're going to read off this stuff. Uh, you know, every, we, haven't, we haven't scared you off. <laughs> I know. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm nervous that I'm going to we're going to we're going to lose the subscribers. <laughs> Just like that. Like in, like in about an hour, we're going to be down to subscribers. Yeah. Oh, maybe uh, we shouldn't do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much for subscribing. We really appreciate it. And like I said, hit that subscriber. Where can people find you? Oh, uh, let's see. Let's start with Twitter at the underscore Bry underscore man mm -hmm. on Facebook, facebook.com slash Hollywood Brian. Still mm -hmm. need to change that, but yeah. probably won't. Yeah. Just going to keep it going. Mm -hmm. And uh, how about on Instagram? I think it's BKC8377. Nice. Yeah. I like it. Very, yeah. very prepared with your Twitter handles and Instagram handles and your handle handles. Love handles. Well, yeah, those are there. <laughs> I try I try to disguise those. I'm scared. That's why the camera is where it is. Uh, all right, guys. Well, we will be signing off here. We thank you for watching, and we hope to see you guys at the movie soon. Let's go see Deadpool. Yes. See it. Do I it. You agree. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do Peace. Later. <laughs> If you watch the show on YouTube, please click that thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And thank you for watching.